Our next step in uh, deriving a mathematical theory of fluids is to apply Newton's second law. So Newton's second law. And Newton's second law says that the rate of change of momentum in a system is equal to the summation of forces. So d m u by dt is equal to summation of forces. Now remember that this entire term is for a system. And again, we are going to use the Reynolds transport theorem to uh, translate what this would mean for a fixed control volume. In, in what follows, we will only be dealing with fixed control volumes. Uh, okay, so to simplify things. Okay, so in this case, our extensive property is momentum, that's mu, so that our intensive property is dB by dm, that's equal to u. So that's momentum per unit mass, okay? And the Reynolds transport theorem tells us that dB by dt is equal to the integral or d partial by partial t of the integral over the control volume of rho u dv, so this is rho times the intensive property, plus the fluxes across the surface of a control volume. So if this were the material volume and this is a control volume, we have got the momentum coming in and going out. And be careful here uh, because we're going to be doing the uh, rho times the intensive property times u dot n ds. This is really important to realize the difference between this rho u and this u. Uh, and this is equal to the summation of forces. Now, what are these forces? Are the forces acting on the material volume or the control volume? It doesn't matter. It's the same thing. Um, because in the end, the Reynolds transport theorem is also interpreted as the instant at which the material volume coincides with the control volume, and therefore the summation of the forces are, is just going to be the same on the um, control volume or within the control volume. We're not going to talk about forces right now. We're just going to leave this formula as is. Um, but know that oftentimes um, for this integral analysis, and this is really just your undergraduate um, uh, fluid mechanics um, approach for, uh, for so far for this integral form, we are going to be using this formula to essentially derive a net force that is being exerted um, in a fluid on a, on a structure, for example. Now, a few things that you have to keep in mind here is that this is for an inertial um, control volume. Control volume. So this is a control volume that is not accelerating. Um, and in this case, it's actually fixed, so we're not taking the relative speed of the control volume. It's not going to matter for our derivations of the Navier-Stokes, um, but for now, um, just keep this in mind that this is for an inertial control volume um, rather than an accelerating one. We would have to make some changes to derive that. Um, we're not going to do that in this course. So, for example, if you have, if you're, if you're following a, a rocket that's going up accelerating into the atmosphere and you draw your control volume around the rocket, then you would have to take non-inertial effects into consideration. And the forces, um, forces, now in, we will eventually show that there are um, um, body and surface forces um, within a fluid, but for now a control volume is going to cut through um, solid surfaces. So for example, you let's say you have like a little um, nozzle and that is, um, there's a jet coming out and uh, you know, you draw your control volume um, just kind of around the nozzle and you want to get an idea of the force exerted by the fluid flow that is um, 
coming out from the uh, nozzle's exit. Now, a few simplifications occur here, and specifically when the velocity is aligned with the surface, and um, so that u dot n is, is essentially, so if u is uniform and aligned with the surface, so this thing just simplifies into a summation of um, um, uh, momentum uh, leaving and momentum coming out. Just like with mass conservation, we had the rate of change of mass conservation of mass inside a control volume uh, minus n plus mass out equals zero. In this case, rate of change of momentum within the control volume, okay, um, uh, minus momentum in plus momentum out is equal to the summation of. Um, forces exerted on the entire control volume. Okay, so this, these are the net forces um, exerted on the control volume. The simplifying assumption here is that uh, for simplified control volumes, um, where uh, we select our surfaces carefully, we're going to assume uniform inflow and outflow, etc. This simplifies quite a bit and becomes the following. You still have the d by dt of the integral rho u dv over the control volume. But if um, you are looking at surfaces that take, for example, a control volume like this, you have some flow going out, um, u out and some flow going out, u out and some flow going in, you in and assuming you have uniform velocities everywhere, then this integral simply turns into a summation of um, this guy becomes aligned with the inlet, so minus summation of m dot in, and this guy is uh, perpendicular to the surface, so that's how you get the minus sign over here, um, u in plus summation of m dot out u out equal to the summation of forces. So essentially you just count the number of inlets, count the number of outlets, multiply the mass flow rate inlet times the velocity at the inlet and then subtract that from the left hand side and then add the m dot out and so these are the outlets and you simplify this linear uh, momentum balance significantly for simplified versions. Now, in practice, we're going to be using this guy over here to derive the Navier-Stokes equations, but this is a little formula that you could use that you derived in undergrad, and um, we're going to do a couple of examples on that one next. Next, we are going to apply Newton's second law of motion uh, to fluids, and we're going to apply this to a material element. So what does this tell us? Newton's Newton's second law tells us that the rate of change of momentum for a system is balanced by the summation of external forces acting on the system. Now, we want to apply this to a material volume because, like we said, these equations, uh, these laws of physics, they apply to material systems. So all we have to do here is do the translation from this guy using the tra Reynolds transport theorem to a control um, volume formulation. So in this case, the extensive quantity B is the momentum of the system, so that the intensive property B is dB by dm, and that's equal to u, that's momentum per unit mass. And then the Reynolds transport theorem tells us that uh, db by dt equal um, d by dt of mu, that's equal partial by partial t of the integral over a control volume of rho u dv, rho times intensive property integrated over the control volume plus the net fluxes over the control surface, the control volume of rho times the intensive property u dot n ds. And that is equal to the summation of forces. Okay, a couple of things here um, that we want to note is that one, 
this is a vector uh, equation. So this moment, linear momentum balance, this is a vector equation in the sense that it applies to the three components of the velocity and the three components of the forces. So in other words, this turns into d by dt integral rho ux dv plus integral rho ux of u dot n ds and equal summation of forces in the x direction and then partial by partial t rho uy dv plus integral of control surface control surface rho uy also u dot n ds equal summation of forces in the y direction etc also in the z direction so be mindful of that because that's going to help us in determining um, if you have a, a, a control volume con and, and control surface it's going to help us in determining the forces in the different directions that uh, we are dealing with second this is done for an inertial um, control volume inertial control volume that's a control volume that is not accelerating so specifically here we are going to consider only fixed control volumes because we're interested in the end in getting to the Navier-Stokes equations um, but doing a accelerating control volume for example let's say you're, you're looking at a the forces exerted on a rocket your control volume is the rocket and the rocket is accelerating as it's going up the at, as it's going up in the atmosphere then you have to make some changes uh, to the left hand side but overall this is um, the formula that we will be dealing with um, just now this is nothing more than what you've derived in your undergraduate fluid mechanics and this is the linear linear momentum um, balance theorem near momentum balance um, theorem a, and one last thing is that there's a before we get to do some examples a really nice simplification uh, ensues uh, uh, from from this formulation and that's specifically when we have control volumes that are aligned um, with the uh, with the exits and the inlets of the uh, uh, of the control volume. So let's say, for example, um, uh, you know you have a, a a little jet that a little nozzle that's spitting out um, a jet, and then you have a flat plate over here, and you know let's say the jet ideally kind of diverges equal like this so you have outlet outlet and then inlet over here and let's say you pick your control volume to be this little thing um, over here then in this region this region and that region there's inlet and outlet but you can if you assume the velocity is are uniform and constant across these guys then we can simplify things quite a bit so let's look at the theorem again d by dt of integral of rho u dv over the control volume plus integral over the control surface of rho u uh, u dot n d s equal to the summation of forces then what you can do here is for all the control surfaces um, if you assume u is uh, perpendicular to the surface, and so it's going to be aligned with the unit normal, either um, coming in, which would give us u dot n negative, and leaving, which would give us u dot n positive, that just turns into, um, so rho u is mass flow rate, right? And u dot n is going to either be plus u or minus u. So this whole integral turns into um, a summation over inlets and outlets for inlets inlets you get um, for the integral you get m dot in times u dot n is negative so you get minus m dot in u in this is a pause no vector here so this is just in the magnitude of the velocity and for outlets you get m dot out u out um, dot n out that's positive so that's u out 
and if you sum up over all the inlets and outlets then this formula this theorem nicely um, converts into d by dt integral over cv of rho u dv minus summation over all the inlets times the velocity at the inlet plus the summation over all the outlets um, times the velocity at the outlet and that's equal to the summation over the external uh, forces. Now this is still a vector equation so I'm going to add a little vector over here to say that if this is you know in the x direction we're going to take um, the x forces if this is in the the x components and if this is in the y direction we're going to take the y components and so on. Okay. The last thing I wanted to talk about is the meaning of this summation of over the uh, the forces. So when when we look at Newton's second law, these are uh, the forces acting on the system. Um, so how does that relate to the forces acting on the control volume? Well, they're one and the same thing, because all we have to do is consider the material volume to be um, aligned with the control volume. And then we can conclude that the external, the forces on the material system are equal to the forces on the control volume. We, we will address that a little bit later once we take the Reynolds transport theorem and apply it on a, just a purely fluid control volume and where the external forces are just forces exerted by the by other parcels of the of the fluid but over here external forces could be um, uh, things exerted from by the fluid on a solid surface or by the solid surface on the fluid because we're taking this macroscopic approach um, in this uh, in this integral uh, in this linear momentum theorem